الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونسأله خير الدارين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رحمة الله للعالمين خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله We praise Allah We ask him to grant us the best in this life and in the life of eternity and we ask him to shower his blessing and peace on the last of his messengers his gift to humanity his mercy to the world Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we bear witness that there is no deity save Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of Allah dear Muslims Lately, there is a concern, a concern in the mind of every Muslim, he or she, and a concern in the minds of all Muslim organizations and the Muslim gatherings. The concerns are triggered by the acceleration of unpleasant accusations or events or arrests that uh, has been targeting certain Muslim individuals and some Muslim groups for alleged crimes against the laws of the United States. And of course the cases are in court and of course we as a Muslim community we always made our stand very clear, we stand up determined that the laws should be protected, that every individual is entitled to the due process and the issues should be settled in courts of law, not on O'Reilly shows and on Fox News. And this will always be our stand. We are not ganging together because some Muslims are arrested or some Muslims are accused. However, we hope that this country will be and will stay as a country of presumption of innocence and of due process and every person is innocent until proven guilty and people should never be accused or tried because of their political or religious opinions no matter what these opinions are this is what the United States are all about people are supposed to come under the law when they violate the law not because they harbor any opinions or they express any thoughts and this is the protection of the Bill of Rights and the American Constitution and this is an unalienable right that God gave to human beings we as Muslims believe in that so our concern is not that a person or two or five or ten have been arrested or have been accused because we know that no matter what eventually we hope that they will have their defense, if they are guilty, they should be punished. If they are innocent, justice should be ratified. So to us, this is not the issue. The issue is how these events are ex exploited, are clearly exploited, by people who did never hide their animosity to Islam and the Muslims. So we are concerned about the exploitation of the events. Not everybody is arrested 
is actually guilty and not everybody is guilty is actually guilty of a major crime and not every major crime is a crime against the safety of the United States there are shades and grades but the way things are handled once a person is accused is arrested it is these powers sitting there to exploit that to cast a shadow of doubt on the whole community and to scare other fellow Americans from that community and to frame and to tarnish the image of a community and the image of the religion that we hold dearly to. This is the problem. The problem, and please let us understand that very clearly because we are asked by people and we are asked by media. Our problem is not, is not that people are arrested. Our problem is others are exploiting this for an agenda that we don't believe that it serves the United States of America or it is seeking justice. This is the issue. And this is what we have to spend the energy. And we ha should have the stamina. And we hope that God gives us the ability to prevent that. And let me tell you, it is very challenging. At this stage of our evolution and of our development, we don't have the same loud voices and the same uh, kind of uh, media outreach that will make things uh, set on the right track. It is always impression, image making, fear, and there is an environment of fear, of course, in the country for very good reasons, and within that environment comes the specific people with specific interest groups to push their agenda and main item of this agenda is to marginalize Islam and the Muslims to make them an undesirable component of America. And we knew anybody who lived through or read the history of this country that once a group is labeled like that the prosecution of this group becomes very easy. And if you need any more learning, ask our African-American brothers, they will tell you a lot about that. Once you allow the tarnishing of our community, and we are having meetings with the Japanese Americans, they are telling us their experiences also. Once you allow a community to look different, to be perceived different, and to be labeled as a source of fear, the persecution and the marginalization of this community, even the liquidation of this community becomes possible. And this is what we are supposed to prevent. How do we do that? We do the best we can. It needs skill, it needs cool thinking, it does not need anger or emotions, it needs healthy debate, it needs logical discussions, and it needs lots of research and studying, etc. And our one is that we are doing the best we can and we, we need each other's help on that. But what we need more than that, or before all of that, is certain amount of spiritual integrity, health and the power. We need to be spiritually strong the feeling that we are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when I will say that, and I'm, I'm not saying that we have a problem, let us go and have a spiritual trip. No. I'm saying all of things ought to be done and to be studied, but we, under the current equation, will not be able to perform the way the issue is challenging to us and to match that challenge without really being very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is not a side issue or diversion from the practicalities to talk about being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because only through that we can have the courage, we can have the stamina, as a matter of fact we can have the intelligence and the vision and the clarity that will enable us to do the work that we need to do. This is why it is our duty now to look, and Alhamdulillah Allah did not just leave us alone, and the Quran did not 
become silent on issues like that, he gave us the very clear guidelines how to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I like us to ponder and contemplate certain issues that are very clear in the Quran that will make our spiritual strength and spiritual integrity. Number one, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states about something that it is hated by him, we try to resent that thing and to stay away from it. When the Quran tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves something, we try to get as close to that as possible and we try to do it. This is a logical step, ABCs. It does not need uh, a mullah or, or a alim or a mufti or anything. It means that me look into the Quran and see the directions that Allah is giving to every man and woman sitting here now in this hall and to every man and woman who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see it very clear. And we find it in Surah al saf For example, Ya ayuha alladhina amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'alun kabura maqtan inda Allah an taqulu ma la taf'alun. Clear? Read any translation. All ye who believe. So he's talking hopefully to us. Why do you why do you, Allah is asking the question. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking the question, it is not because he doesn't know the answer. It is because he knows that we don't know the answer. Or the answer is not very clear or not very vibrant in our head. All you who believe, why do you speak different from what you do? Why do you speak in a certain way and act in a different way? This is a rhetorical question, a hypothetical question. Why do you do that? And then comes the statement, كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ This is a most hated thing to Allah, that you say what you do not. So right there comes a factor, an issue, that this is something that is huge, hugely hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's expected from me next? If I am really a believer, I look into myself, am I doing that? I admonish my brothers and my sisters, are we doing that? Are we as a group doing that? If we are, we at least be aware that this thing that we are doing is mostly hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means if you do what is mostly hated, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be close to Allah and you will be deprived of this spiritual supplement and the strength that we all need, not only in these days, but particularly in these days. We are always in that need. If you look at the next verse immediately, it will tell you, it will tell you, Inna Allah yuhibbu. So the first one was most hated, here verily Allah loves. So we listen carefully. الذين يقاتلون في سبيله صفا كأنهم بنيان مرصوص. Allah loves those who fight for His cause very cohesively, and the fighting here is not necessarily a physical fighting. The, this is the utmost confrontation and difficulty. When they do that, they do it like a solid بنيان building مرصوص. What did the Prophet said about بنيان and the believers? يَشُدُّ بَعْضُ وَبَعْضًا It strengthens each other. It holds each other. You hold me, I hold you. You support me, I support you. You empower me, I empower you. This is al-bunyan al-marsus. There is bunyan that can collapse. There is a building that can collapse. At the first, slightest earthquake of four on the other scale, there are certain buildings that they collapse. Because they are not marsus, and they are not يَشُدُّ بَعْضُ وَبَعْضًا but what Allah is talking about is He loves those who confront the danger cohesively supporting and empowering and upholding and promoting and helping each other. This is the issue that... So the Quran in two lines told us what is most created by Allah and what is loved by Allah. What is left really is up to us. But we cannot claim ignorance. I cannot claim, you know what, I don't do that because I did not attend the class 
of the explanation and the interpretation of the Quran in Al-Azhar University. I did not hear the alim. No. This is clear Quran, in clear page, in Surah Al-Saf, in the first two lines that can change our community, our psyche, and our organizations, and our nations, and our states, if we want to. That's the issue. So, the guideline is clear. We need that spiritual integrity by doing that. Then there will be three factors that will separate us from Allah. And all of them have been mentioned in the Quran. Factor number one is fear. وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Don't fear anything but Allah. A believer in الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَاخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا those who have been told the people are gathering against you, fear them, this increased their faith. Fear, my dear brothers and sisters, is incompatible with closeness to Allah. Because this means that you put somebody, some power, some group, some organization, some hegemony ahead of Allah. And in Islam, this is not acceptable. Fear is incompatible with real Iman and the absence of fear does not mean recklessness. Courage is not recklessness. Fear is negative. Courage is positive. Recklessness is irresponsibility. But I should have no fear, then I act intelligently. But once fear sneaks in my heart, this is satanic. This is shaitan scaring his people. So we should not allow fear to sneak into our hearts or to our souls. The second is cruelty. We cannot be cruel and be close to Allah. A heart that is visited by Allah is a soft, tender, kind heart. It is incompatible to have a cruel heart and say, I am close to Allah. And it is explained in the Quran right and left. Their hearts become hardened like rocks or even harder. The third factor is despair. To give up. To give up. Say, what can I do? There is nothing for us to do. We cannot do any change. That is Brothers and sisters, simply, and this is the, one of the very few times I use the word, this is haram. It's prohibited in Islam to be desperate. It is kufr. It's not a simple issue to say there is no hope. A Muslim, he or she can never say, are never allowed to say no hope. Because this means that they are limiting the ability and the capability of Allah. And we cannot do that. Even if the whole equation is bleak, still there is a superpower that can change the equation. So a Muslim should never dare he or she to say there is no hope. If we consider these things and we really work on them, we will be close to Allah, inshallah. الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله My dear brothers and sisters in Islam We need that spiritual power and we need that closeness to Allah that awareness of Him that awareness of Allah that's called taqwa it does not only make you feel good it actually, and we better understand it, according to the Quran, it makes you perform good. It gives you leeway and a way out of difficulty. It gives you a release. Whoever is aware of Allah, Allah will make a way out for that person. So it is a practical thing. It's not only a very dreamy a spiritual feeling, it is a practical thing. It gives us intelligence and knowledge. 
فاتقوا الله ويعلمكم الله you become aware of Allah he will educate you Allah will, will inform you so on the practical when we talk about closeness to Allah and the awareness of him it's not that we are divorcing the mundane issues and the maneuvers and the studying that we need to do no on the contrary I am getting unlimited fuel unending energy ever eclipsing light that will enable me to see through and to work safely among these people جَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ It's a light that you can deal with people through all of these things that I'm talking about are as badly needed for us as it is badly needed to act politically smart or to have a published uh, article or to have a good interview or to uh, strike a good alliance and agreement all of the above are good but this closeness to Allah is the factor that will make it or break it and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we make it and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to look at us kindly and to direct us in the right direction and to keep us on the right path and to keep us straightforward upholding justice and to give us the spiritual power that we need and the intelligence that we need so that we can be suitable to carry his message among his people Allahumma ghafir lana wa rahamna وعافنا واعف عنا وتولنا وتب علينا وانصرنا اللهم نصرا عزيزا وصلوا اللهم على محمد أقل الصلاة